What is going on between Trump and China, especially on AI chips? Let's talk about it. President Trump posted on none other than Truth Social last week. He announced that he will actually now allow NVIDIA to sell its cutting edge H200 AI chips to China after all. This is coming after all of the back and forth that we heard earlier this year about how China was not to be trusted, how it was a national security concern, and that we couldn't, we as in America, could not afford to give China these chips. To be clear, these H200 AI chips are 10 times faster than the H20 chips that Trump had actually reauthorized in July. But as with this presidency, something that we have come to learn, everything has a catch. In return, all President Trump is asking for is for NVIDIA to give 25% of its chip sale profit from China to the U.S. government. Tell me something, has anything changed? Because he did want to charge a tariff or, or a fee or some sort of collector's fee or a management fee. The, the terminology keeps changing, but Donald Trump did want to make a collection at the U.S. government level and directly from NVIDIA, not necessarily from China. The catch is that the, the percent that's going to be charged is a very specific to just China. It's not like President Trump is expecting this across all the countries that NVIDIA is selling its chips to. And it's also on very specific types of chips. As I mentioned, in July, uh, President Trump reauthorized NVIDIA to sell the H20 chips, again, with that markup. That was a new thing back then. It caught the markets and everyone by surprise. But clearly, everyone was okay with it because then he's doing it again, except this time with the H200 chips, which are 10 times faster than the H20 and therefore, what, 10 times more likely to be a national security risk? And, and that's what I keep coming back to. I mean, this is, if this is a national security risk, then how is payment of a 25% fee by NVIDIA to Trump, not by China to President Trump directly, but by NVIDIA. How does this decrease the national security risk at all? I mean, likely it won't decrease the national security risk, but it will financially mitigate it, which is very clear for the, the ask. The part that I wonder is what is going to be the net benefit for the United States? Is it only a cash deal or is there something else? We've been hearing about the kill switch concept in which we know that there is this idea that many of the chips and other parts that are manufactured from the United States and perhaps even other countries do have a central kill switch mechanism. So the question is, is that just some something that actually exists? And as a result, the national security concern may be mitigated because in the end, it's still a risk. Or does this go beyond that and just there's a price tag on national security? And that's a very good point. The kill switch is something that shockingly and not at all unsurprisingly hasn't come up because it's meant to be secret, right? But what you are seeing is a White House divided. You're either on one side or the other. One view, which is being very much pushed by NVIDIA and uh, David Sachs, is that it's better to sell top AI chips to China, get them hooked on the U.S. tech stack, thereby undermining their overall self-sufficiency push and cementing the U.S. as the number one player in the AI game. So that's that's the first host, which is like, no, we should sell to them so that they don't, they're not forced to innovate. They're not forced to make their own products. They can just rely on ours. The second is the other view, and that's the one that I've already kind of touched on, is that whole national security concern, which warns that selling China top U.S. chips is like selling China the rope that you're eventually going to hang yourself on. It's just not a smart, competitive move to make because that will, in order, make China much better and faster than the U.S. because they'll be able to build and innovate on what the U.S. has already done. President Trump has flip-flopped a little bit between the two, but now he seems to be squarely in camp two. But my question for you is, do you think China is going to bite? Are they going to purchase any of these chips? My sense is that they've already given a mandate, not just across government offices, but even to their entire private sector to say, let's start unhooking from U.S. deep tech. And that mandate is still very much in application. Companies have been enticed to not order any more chips, not just from NVIDIA, but from any American player. And the idea behind it is that there is a desire for China to become even more sovereign. They have been rapidly increasing their pace in chip development, chip production. We know that this is a concern for many nations, and this is why we have the next period of fiasco that keeps unfolding into even deeper depths for some reason. I'm observing that Essentially, China is going to say, well, you can sell it to us. You don't have to sell it to us, but we are not going to be relying on you for very much longer. Especially because there's still a ban on certain chips. China is still not allowed to get access to the latest, the newest, the Blackwell and Rubin chips that NVIDIA has developed. So this is, again, a slap in the face, which is what happened back in July. And they responded in exactly the way that you mentioned. The one thing that I also do think a lot about is how energy efficient China is becoming. And this is also one of the weak points for the United States, which is continuously going after higher and higher energy costs. Whereas in China, we know that their energy costs are actually constantly going down and they're being very creative with regards to what their power reserves will be at the country level. This is not just for AI, but in general. So as a result, the ability for China to invest 
directly into AI development, chip development, and many of the, their other critical sectors is going to increase because of the energy savings that they have. And on the US side, what we're starting to discover is that they actually have less choice and have to start warmongering again, going after countries like Venezuela because of the fact that they are really, really going to have to reduce their energy expenditures.